Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the broadcast. My name is Justice Knight, and I'm on an absolute Second Amendment tear right now. I'm tired of people treading on us. Don't tread on me any further. You see, we've talked a lot about our now red flag laws being proposed by both sides of the aisle. There's so much more to this story, though, that nobody's realizing. I warned you that it would extend far beyond just red flag laws, and it already is, and I'm going to show you the headlines to prove exactly that. You see, there's many things we'd expect. We'd expect Warren release his plan to tackle gun violence on heels of deadly mass shootings. We'd expect, expect all this rhetoric from the Democratic Party. Here's an example of just a few. Who in God's name needs a weapon that can handle 100 rounds? For 100 rounds, remember that. Who needs a weapon that can handle 100 rounds? We're going to continue. For God's sake. More than a dozen Democratic presidential uh, candidates campaigning in Iowa today said they want to dramatically reshape the nation's gun policy. I want us to study what works. I want us to try. I want us to make change. Oh, she drives me crazy. AKs, ARs, they have no business in our neighborhoods in peacetime in the United States of America. They are for war zones. Hundreds of... They are for war zones, AKs, ARs, coming from someone who's probably never handled one. So much is debate driven by that side, but we'd expect that of the Democrats. We'd expect it of the candidates, Senator Booker, Trump leadership, key to GOP support of gun control. But would we expect it from the other side of the aisle? President Trump discussions on meaningful background checks. People. We don't want... By whose definition? You see, it's it's moving now. It's it's rolling downhill and it's not going to stop. I hope truly that this some of this is just political rhetoric, but the more I'm reading and the more I'm discovering, the more I'm realizing it may not be anymore. McConnell background checks, red flag laws will be front and center. That's right. It's why you've seen me do so many broadcasts on it. Just like the one yesterday, red flag betrayal. The shocking video of how conservative Dan Crenshaw went on a rant, basically thumbing his nose at all of us, saying, you don't understand. It's not what you think it is. You see, the Democratic, the Democrats' red flag law is different than the conservative red flag law. That's absolutely one of the most ludicrous statements I've ever heard. Now, if you haven't subscribed to me at YouTube, I'm going to ask you, please make sure your bell is checked. Subscribing to me makes no difference if you're not being alerted to my videos. However, there's a second way. If you go to justiceanight.com, now indicated by the large yellow arrow, put your email there. You'll be notified once a day when I broadcast of when my videos went up, no matter where I post them. Just below that is my donation portal. Absolutely critical to a, a very exciting upcoming project that will assure you're still allowed the free speech because they're going to deplatform everybody. It's not if, it's when. There's no question of that. It's why I've been promoting alternate media such as Parler. As you'll see here, some of your favorites, Infowars and Breitbart and Big League Politics and Laura Loomer sits over here. There you go. And that's just a simple thumb through. That wasn't staged. That's just what's up on the screen at this moment in time. That's why I need you to go over there, subscribe. Link will be below and also at justiceanight.com. Now back to our story. You see, history is repeating itself. They were killers with submachine guns. You hear again, <laughs> all these large capacity the weapons of war, as they so say. Then the president went after their weapons. Franklin Roosevelt's National Firearm Act of 1934 was aimed at John Dillinger, Bonnie and Clyde, and other murderous gangs. The article goes on to state... 
and again, this on the Washington Post, but sometimes you have to use even their references because you know what they're coming after. They're coming after us, so of course they're going to be very accurate in these articles. They were the mass shooters of their day, and all of America knew their names. John the Killer, Dillinger, Arthur, Pretty Boy, Floyd, Bonnie and Clyde, George, Machine Gun, Kelly. See, Machine Gun, that's the key. In the 1930s, the violence by the notorious gangsters was fueled by the Thompson submachine guns, or Tommy gun, that fired up to 600 rounds of bullets in a minute. Boot edge, edge, you heard him. In response, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was pressing Congress to act on his New Deal for crime, specifically a bill officially called the National Firearms Act of 1934. Informally, it was known as the Anti-Machine Gun Bill. I'm just going to tie back history to current time. It's a killing machine. Women takes friend's assault rifle and wants to destroy it. But let's hear some of the coverage. The El Paso police chief says Patrick Crucius purchased his weapon legally. So did Connor Betts, the accused gunman in the deadly Dayton shooting. In fact, investigators say Betts bought his assault rifle online in Texas, along with 100... Assault rifle, A-R-A-K, again, boot at edge, you heard the, it's the same talking points over and over, A-K style, A-R style, style, it's like they're talking about food when they're talking about weapons. Round drum magazines. Ravel says Texas does not limit the amount of ammunition or number of rifles a customer can buy. There's a lot of... Doesn't limit the amount of ammunition or number of rifles a customer can buy as is promised and committed to by our constitution but i guess suddenly that's become a bad thing back to the article of roosevelt's firearm bill also proposed requiring newly purchased pistols and revolvers see how they extended it this eventually was pulled back thankfully and owners to be fingerprinted in february of 1933 in miami a would-be assassin had fired a pistol at president-elect roosevelt and then killed visiting chicago mayor anton cermak the article goes on, rather than a federal ban of machine guns, the Roosevelt administration proposed taxing, listen, history repeating itself, the high-powered weapons virtually out of existence. It would place a tax of $200 on the purchase of a machine gun and sawed-off shotguns. The tax equal today to about $3,800. And lo and behold, Elizabeth Warren aims to boost firearms taxes. Probes NRA under new gun control proposal. You see why I said the ball is rolling downhill? They are going to stop at nothing. Nothing to assure these are taken away or absolutely unattainable for the average American citizen. Nobody expected... This is the most critical point. The underworld to be going around giving their fingerprints and getting permits to carry these weapons. No, because criminals and governments don't require the same thing that now they're proposing their citizens do. Of course, isn't that all part of the overall plot? And when I said it wasn't going to stop at guns, Schumer bill would require FBI to regulate body armor sales. That's right, because the shooter was wearing body armor. Schumer now wants to assure that the FBI gets involved with any of us who buy body armor. The body armor killed absolutely no one. The shooter did. But they want that banned also. So now you can't protect yourself in another form and fashion. If that doesn't just send chills up your spine and validate everything we've been talking about, I don't know what will. Trump wants to take guns away from the people in crisis. Will that work? You see, this isn't anything new, folks. You see, I just go through a, a basic search. Of course, I have a lot of this background for you. These are actual <laughs> congressional. I'm going to just show you one of them. This is S506, Extreme Risk Protection Order Act of 2019. Just happened to be the last action was in February of this year. So the Extreme Risk Protection Order Act that Trump happened to mention already exists. I'm going to take it a step further. Here's another one. Extreme Risk Protection Order Act 2019, H.R. 1236. Last action in March of this year before any of these shootings happened. Already existed. Lawmaker says TAPSAC can stop future massacres. I talk about this a lot. Let's listen a little bit more. In a nation deeply divided over gun rights, there is another path to public protection. If it's good enough for presidents, diplomats, and celebrities and members of Congress, it's good enough for Americans. We're gonna stop there, except that the Democrats and politicians that he's referring to are the ones who would technically overtake us. So if it works for them, they're already protected. 
protected has nothing to do with American citizens and don't believe these talking points. Congressman Brian Babin talking about the Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act, TAPS for short. Simply put, the measure would fund and equip local law enforcement agents with the same predictive tools and resources pioneered by the Secret Service using advanced behavioral science. These There's the TAPS Act. See, explained again. Big Brother would be watching everything. Because not only did they want to take your guns away, and not only did they want to make sure they can take body armor away so you, you can't protect yourself, but now they want to predict what you're going to do with that weapon you allegedly no longer have with the armor you no longer would wear. And they wonder why so many of us are shaking our head, but don't worry because this already exists too. H.R. 838, these all proposals up for approval. That is the TAPS Act. Now America's pushing back. Montana's first red flag bill voted down with little fanfare. No, because mainstream media doesn't want you to know that. They want you to appear that the ball rolling downhill absolutely can't be stopped. Even though states are voting against it, we could just take another example. Gun sales surge in the wake of mass shootings. Again, nothing that the mainstream media would ever want you to hear because they want to make sure that the likes of Stalin and Hitler and Mao See, Stalin took guns away from his citizens in 1929, then murdered 20 million of them once they were defenseless. Hitler took guns away from his citizens in 1938, then murdered 13 million of them. Mao took guns away from his citizens in 1935, then murdered 20 million of them once defenseless. These are facts, my friends. Because the experts agree gun control works. Except there's really no joke within these graphics. This is truly life or death in many ways. And we have to wake up to that because I told you this onslaught wasn't going to stop. It's why I've been covering it so incessantly for the last week now. We obviously all care about the loss of life. We want to prevent it by any means possible. However, when those means infringe on our Constitution, then I say no. Don't tread on me and don't tread on the American public. But once again, that's why you're here for the actual facts surrounding all these events. So if you haven't subscribed, please do make sure the bell is checked. Godspeed and God bless. Until next time, my name is Justice Knight, signing out.